Joining us is the author of the 148 tweet story known as Zola from Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you so much, Asia, for joining us. Thank you for having me. I mean, is this, it's surreal for me to have read your tweets and now have you here and it be a movie. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what it feels like for you. Yeah, well, it's been like a long process. We started this project like six years ago. So now like it's more, the anxieties died down and I'm just ready for everyone to see it and talk about it and, and just really give it to, to the world. So the movie is coming out, you're gonna give it to the world, but we are still processing the real life version of what happened that night. I want, the first question I have is, you, you're at the Hooters or, and you know, you meet a stranger and she, she makes this, she makes you an offer that you could refuse, but you did it that right. day. You decided, I'm in on this. What was going on in your life that made it such an appealing offer? Uh, well, I was also dancing. So, like, I worked at Hooters during the day, but then at night I worked at um, a club uh, at my home, in my hometown. And so, and I was traveling. So I would travel, I would dance. I had been to Florida, never Tampa, but I had been to Miami to work. I had been to... North Carolina to work, I'd go to Georgia. So like traveling and dancing was already my thing. And usually I would do it alone. So yeah, it seemed appealing to go with another another dancer. So you had gone on this um, excursion, if you will, to make money um, as a stripper, which you had been doing. And in that time on the road, as we said, there were a lot of dark moments. I mean, this was yeah. not, someone asked me the other day, is it like hangover? And I said, no, 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 no. This, this <laughs> is not a funny trip. I mean, you happen to be a witty writer, but in reality, yeah. what we're talking about here is an experience um, where your life at times was in danger. Absolutely. I, um, for me, my humor is kind of how I relate to other people, you know? Um, I, I guess dark humor, you can call it, is kind of how I process trauma at times. Like when you say, you know, when you go through something and, and that's saying, it's like, we're gonna laugh about this later. It's one of those things. Cause in the moment I was not laughing at all. <laughs> how does a tweet turn into a movie? Yeah, I think a story is just, you know, it's only as good as the storyteller, right? So I'm good at engaging people in that way. I'm good at expressing myself and I've always really, demanded um, agency over my voice. That's just the type of character that I am. And so um, it, it made sense. I appreciated all of the, the conversation about it and I appreciated the acknowledgement. And I just um, really at that point wanted people to understand there's like a, a layers to sex work, right? I mean, there's a, the sex worker who's doing this because she wants to and she's comfortable and it's a way to make money and it's her lifestyle. And then there's the other side of, of it where it could be a bit traumatic and it's like a last resort and it's, you know, something that you, you kind of didn't really have a choice into. And so I really wanted people to understand that besides my storytelling, mm -hmm. my sex work was, was, a positive for me. It was something that I enjoyed doing. And so to be lured into a situation like this, which this is another layer of it, this is what we call trafficking, mm. something that I never in a million years would have thought would have happened to me, um, especially being in that life and being in that world and being so comfortable in it. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a shock for me myself. And you have, I mean, until now, now that the film is out, you've not been on a lot of shows. You've not talked about this. All of your words, all of this story has either been in Twitter or now in this film. What do you want people to understand about what happened and why it turned into such a compelling movie? Um, I guess I just want people to understand that this is... Because for whatever reason, people think this topic is kind of taboo still, but um, I just want people to know that this is something that happens every day, and it's something that can happen to anyone. I mean, it's not black and white. It's not a white van pulls up and throws you in the back. It's you meet a really pretty, really nice girl at your job, and you go on a trip like you always do, and you kind of just don't make it home. Um, so I, I hope people can really understand that and take that away. So you're played by Taylor Page in this film. The content, obviously, very difficult in many ways to talk about, even though it has your unique stamp of humor in this. What was it like to see Taylor in a, play you? I mean, play this character based on your tweets. 
Yeah. I mean, over the years, we got really close, and she really kind of jumped in and dedicated herself to portraying me in the best way possible. So in doing that, she really, you know, got to know me. I call her my sister now. And um, I'm one of those people I, I really talk with my face, and it's more so in the mannerisms than the words, especially in a situation like that. Uh, I think saying less is more. So um, to see Taylor really embody that energy, um, I don't know, it was kind of like watching the autobiography. I joked the first time I seen the film, I was like, was that me? Like, she really, you know, did that. 